I'm gonna show how to do the tensor contraction. This tutorial will help you in the general relativity course. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to recommend you to first watch my other video on tensors. So here I'll assume you already know about the tensors. When we study general relativity, we consider four space-time dimensions. So we'll always use four-dimensional tensors. It could be any rank, but the dimension number is always fixed to four. Remember that, okay? Before we start, I'd like to first introduce you something called a metric tensor. You'll see this tensor a lot in the general relativity course. This Minkowski tensor describes a flat space. Flat space meaning no gravity exists in this world. That's why the matrix looks simple. It's just negative 1, 1, 1, 1 diagonally. And because this tensor has two indices, mu and nu, it's rank 2 tensor, right? And these indices could be alpha, beta, or rho, sigma, or gamma, delta. It doesn't matter. Those are dummy indices, you just choose the alphabets on your own. As long as you keep other tensors consistent with each other, then it's fine. So for example, you know the first index mu usually represents the row and the second index nu usually represents the column. If you said mu is the row and nu is the column, just like here, then all the other tensors should follow that order. So here on the other side, the order is opposite, but it doesn't matter because all the other tensors are opposite as well. So these two are pretty much the same thing. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, by the way, that was a covariant tensor because the indices are at the bottom. Now we have the Minkowski metric tensor with the indices at top. So contravariant form, but the tensor looks pretty much the same. So if you multiply this covariant metric by the contravariant metric, you'll get the four dimensional identity matrix. One might question, is a covariant tensor times its contravariant tensor same thing as the matrix times its inverse matrix? It looks like it as it's giving the identity matrix, but no. This is just for the metric tensors. Generally, covariant and contravariant tensors aren't inverse of each other. Don't confuse, it's just a metric in our case. So like covariant and contravariant form of metric tensors just happen to be the inverse of each other. All right, let me now show some examples. I'm gonna first use a vector to perform contraction. We will use the simplest kind in metric tensors, so the Minkowski metric. But later on, you'll be contracting tensors with other types of metric. But in this video, I'm going to use the simplest one. First of all, why do we need to learn contraction? We learn it to change the positions of the indices. For example, we are given a rank 1 contravariant tensor, which is a vector with an index on top. And we are asked to find the same vector, but with an index at the bottom. To do that, we simply multiply the vector by the covariant metric. Then these mu's are cancelled, and the vector v will now take the index nu that's left alone. And mathematically, this was just a multiplication, so you multiply the two matrices. You'll get this. Make sense? Let's look at the second example. Now it's asking to obtain v sub mu. v sub nu, we could just multiply by the metric and have the new, right? But here, the thing is, in order to contract, we need mu to be cancelled like this. How can we keep mu there? Should we just do this? No, that is completely wrong. If you have eta mu mu, whatever number you put here, you have to always put the same number into both indices. So this is wrong. Here's the correct way. As I said, you can simply rename the index. Here, I change mu to nu, then multiply by the metric to cancel the nu's. We'll be left with mu. The question was pretty much asking for the same answer. It's just named it differently. As I said, the name shouldn't matter. So can you guess what the answer of this should be? You can simply rename one of the indices and contract the tensor with the indices. So it's the same answer. We just wanted an index at the bottom. The name doesn't matter. And of course, if there were other tensors attached to here, they just gotta be named in the same way. Keep things consistent, that's all. Let's now look at this rank one covariant tensor, which is a dual vector. 
Example 4, find this. What would you do? This time, just multiply by the contravariant metric to cancel the index nu and have the index gamma on top. Mathematically, it's just a multiplication. Okay, example 5. Find the product of the two tensors, or we can say a vector times the dual vector. We just knew how to get this one, which has the index on top, by multiplying the metric and of course just use another alphabet to distinguish it. So the contravariant one has negative 5 and the covariant one has positive 5, right? And if we multiply the two, negative 20. This is just a dot product. We get a scalar, negative 20. So contraction with rank 1 tensor is quite simple task. Let's now try with a rank 2 tensor. Example 1. We want to lower the first index mu. What should we do? We first rename one of the indices. I just chose lambda nu and contract with the metric mu lambda by canceling the lambdas. So again, this is just a matrix multiplication. Now, how about this one? We are now lowering the second one. Because the second index is on the right side, we should put the metric on the right side of the tensor as well. Does it make sense? So the order is now opposite. And it does matter in matrix multiplication, right? So we'll get a different answer. This is an important thing to know, right? Now example 3 isn't really about contraction, it's just some extra knowledge. So let's have a look. This time, we do actually want the indices to be the same. So if we say the top mu is equal to 1, the bottom mu must also be 1. This is transformed from the tensor that has distinct indices. And you just take the trace of that tensor. Trace means add all the diagonal components of the matrix, right? So as you can see, we have 1, 5, 1, 1 here, right? So just add them all to get 8. Yeah, this is a scalar. Good to know. Last example. Find t new mu. So the indices are switched. Should it be just the original tensor? Because I said naming doesn't matter. Yeah, you're actually right. But let's say we're in the middle of solving this. And we need to know this t new mu. This is clearly about the indices actually being switched. They're not dummy indices. In this case, this is just the transpose of the original tensor. Now think about it. As I mentioned before, the first index normally represents the rows of the matrix, and the second index represents the columns of the matrix. If we're switching the row and the column, that is the transpose matrix, right? So it makes sense. We have so far done some basic contractions. I'd like to comment on this feature. You remember how we had to put the metric in the front to lower the first index and put it in the back to lower the second index, right? But then, how about lowering the middle one when it's rank 3 tensor or something? Hmm, you're starting to wonder, eh? I mean, if you don't need to know the higher rank tensor contractions, you can end the video now. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, by the way. It motivates me a lot. But if you want to continue learning, I'll be glad to explain you about this. Let's go back to this one. When we lower the second index, we put the metric on the other side, right? Even if you put the eta, the metric in the front, that is still correct. It's just we wouldn't be able to tell in which order we should multiply in terms of the matrix multiplication. Now, I'm going to show you the legitimate contraction method. This was the actual math behind the contraction. When we have identical indices, so one on top and one on the bottom, in this case it's lambda, this expression means we are summing all the cases for the lambda values. And think about it, when we were multiplying the vector and the dual vector before, you implicitly added all the terms. Why did you do that? Those terms represented all the possible cases for new. Yeah, this is the actual math. So for the rank 2 tensors, it just happened to be the matrix multiplication. But we never learned multiplication of higher rank tensors before. Do you know how to multiply something by a rank 3 tensor? No, right? So did you notice anything? This tensor contraction is basically the generic tensor multiplication. 
You're about to learn multiplication with higher rank tensors. So let's redo the example two in the proper way. By the way, you see we still have two indices surviving on each term, the mu and u. So that means each term still contains 16 elements. And I'm just following the traditional way. So mu is the row number and u is the column number. So each term is still a four by four matrix. And in the end, we are going to be adding these four matrices, okay? Let's look at the first matrix. You remember how the Minkowski metric only had diagonal elements? So if the first index of the eta is already zero, then only when the second index nu is also zero will have a value. So except the zeroth column, which corresponds to nu equals zero, first, second, and third columns should all be zero. So let's only talk about the eta zero zero case. What was eta zero zero? Negative one. So if we investigate the row elements of the zeroth column, you will notice that we just have to time it by negative one all the time. So that was all about the first matrix here. We successfully obtained the first 16 element. Now let's look at the second matrix. Again, the metric only contains diagonal elements, so only the elements that have eta 1 1 will survive. And what was eta 1 1? Positive 1. Applying this to four surviving elements, you see that the values shouldn't change. Since I don't have much space here, I won't show the matrix, okay? But you know how it should look. Only the second column will have the non-zero element. So you can check by yourself the other two matrices as well. Finally, if we add these four matrices, we'll get this. And look at the top. We did obtain the proper result without having to struggle with the order of multiplication. This is why I said whether you put the metric in the front or in the back, if you know how to calculate it properly, then it won't matter anymore. But I agree that the matrix multiplication is probably a more convenient way at least up till rank 2 tensors, I agree. So this is a bonus example. This is the electromagnetic field tensor from electrodynamics. Let's try to obtain the covariant version of the tensor, the easy way. Make sense? Because we have to lower the left and right indices. So we put one metric in the front and another metric in the back. All good. Now let's do it the hard way. So first, expand the index that is going to be cancelled. Because we have two different indices that will be cancelled, there will be actually 16 different terms, so 16 different matrices. I'm going to separate the matrices into four different categories using this i and j. i and j are the x, y, z components, so they're just non-zero term numbers. That means only one matrix will correspond to this first term the first category. Now we have i's here, so three matrices correspond to this term, and the next one as well. This should have been j's instead of i's to be more precise, but these are just dummy indices, so we can just say another i's, but in different positions. So three matrices in this term as well. Now the last term has both i's and j's, so nine different combinations, therefore nine different matrices. So that's the total of 16 matrices, all right? Now look at this. F00 in here is zero. So the first term vanishes. And now if you look at the tensor again, this row and this column contain same element, but it's just the signs are opposite. So that means we can combine the first two terms like this. Okay, let's vary the indices numbers now. First, when mu and nu are both zero. Again, the Minkowski metric only has diagonal element, so all the non-diagonal elements are zero, so everything's gone in this case. Okay, next, the case when mu is k, so just like i and j, k could be one or two or three, and nu is still zero, once again, the non-diagonal elements of the metric are zero, so... 
eta 0, 0 is minus 1, and k being the same number as i should only survive. So this. All good? Similarly, for the case when mu is 0 and nu is L, that's this one. And lastly, when both mu and nu are non-zeros, that's this. Let's collect all the information now. For mu and nu equals 0, there is nothing. So, 0. Next one, we just gotta add the minus sign to everything. In the next case as well, just minus to everything. And lastly, the rest parts didn't seem to have changed at all. So that was the hard way. I know it was long, but you have to keep practicing this if you want to study general relativity. Anyway, I hope this helped you understand tensor contraction, and see you next time.